This is section 4.5. We're going to look at two new shortcuts for showing the triangles are congruent. Our two shortcuts are going to be side angle side. Don't read this as SAS. It's side angle side. And hypotenuse leg or HL. Before we jump into that, we need to know what an included angle is. Angle A is the included angle of these two segments, segment AC and segment AB. Angle A is included because notice, angle A is where the two segments come together. So the included angle is really just the angle that's in between two certain segments. So if you look at these two segments, clearly angle B is the included angle. Between these two segments, angle C is the included angle. We needed that terminology so we could use the side angle side postulate. If you have two triangles with pairs of congruent parts as shown on these triangles, these two triangles must be congruent. It's impossible to make two different triangles with these pairs of congruent parts. And they got to be in this order. Notice how we got a pair of congruent sides, a second pair of congruent sides, and then we have one pair of congruent angles. And where those congruent angles are is really important. These congruent angles are included they're in between the pairs of congruent sides. That's why the A is in between the S's. So anytime you see this arrangement, these two triangles are congruent. Are these triangles congruent? Why or why not? Well, I see a pair of congruent sides and I see a second pair of congruent sides and that's all I see. That's all they give you anyways. However, there are vertical angles here do not forget about the things that you're supposed to know, like vertical angles. Vertical angles are going to give you congruent angles in between the congruent sides. So are these triangles congruent? Yes. Why or why not? Well, they're congruent by side angle side. You have two pairs of congruent sides with included angles congruent. And you could write a congruent statement for these triangles as well. Use the given information to determine whether the two triangles are congruent by side angle side. So we're going to use these two triangles and I'm going to mark the congruent parts given. Segment AB is congruent to segment DE. Segment AC is congruent to segment DF. So we have two pairs of congruent sides. Angle B is congruent to angle E. We have the parts, the pairs of congruent parts to use side angle side. However, the congruent angles are not in between the congruent sides. So if you have two pairs of congruent sides and your congruent angles are not in between, then you have what's called ass. Not side angle side, you have ass. Two triangles are not congruent by ass. There is no ass postulate. The point of that is, if you have these pairs of congruent parts in this order, you could potentially make two different triangles. They don't have to be congruent. OK, now you could also tell, are these angles included between these sides? Well, look at segment AB and segment AC. What's the included angle? Is it angle B? No, it should be angle A. So you should know immediately that this angle is not included. OK, now when you come down to this example, I won't make the marks here, but notice how I have two pairs of congruent segments and a pair of congruent angles. It could be side angle side or it could be ass. How do you know the difference? Well, look at the congruent segments here. Don't they both have a B? Don't these ones both have an E? Absolutely. So this is an example of side angle side because the congruent angles are in between. So when you come down to this other one, notice how I have the congruent angles listed in between. That has nothing to do with whether or not they actually are included. So notice how I had the angles listed last here and they weren't included. I had the angles listed last here, but they were included. So that doesn't have anything to do with it. Segment BC, segment CA, angle C is in between. Segment ED, segment DF, angle D is in between. These angles are included. These triangles would be congruent by side angle side. And if you don't like doing it this shortcut way, erase these marks and make new marks. And then you'll see if the congruent angles are in between or not. Use the side angle side postulate. Segment BC, 
is congruent to segment DA. They give you that to use. They're telling you that's true. That's given. Now, there is another piece of given, but I'm going to write it on a second step because it's a completely different concept. We're talking about congruent segments, then we're talking about parallel segments. So I want to focus on what it means for segments to be parallel. If these segments are parallel, then you should know that these angles are congruent. When you have parallel segments, your alternate interior angles are congruent. So just be careful how you name them. We'll name this one first. We'll name it angle CAD. Then we'll name this one. Make sure that you line up the corresponding parts. What does C go with? C goes with A. So when I go to name this angle, I've got to make sure I name it angle ACB. That's the alternate interior angle theorem. So at this point, we have two pairs of congruent parts. Look at your picture. Do you notice anything that isn't marked or given to you? I'll use a different color for that one. This segment AC is on both triangles. So segment AC is congruent to itself. Just make sure that you're writing the, the order correctly. Does A go with A or does A go with C? A goes with C. So segment AC is congruent to segment CA by the reflexive property. Now look at your picture. You have two pairs of congruent sides and you have congruent angles that are included. That means your triangles are congruent. And you can write it exactly the way they want you to prove it. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA by side angle side. 